We will be reading today from Matthew 5, verses 13 to 16. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do the people light a lamp and put it under, the bo under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Lord, thank you for this beautiful day, and please open our hearts to your word. In your name we pray, amen. I still remember my first few days here at the seminary. I was coming straight from Puerto Rico, a place with an endless summer, to a state with four seasons. But that did not make me homesick at all, for I was excited to learn how it feels to be in those seasonal changes. What made me homesick was the food. <laughs> Every time I walked into Mackay, I was sad. <laughs> the problem is that where we come from, where I come from, we use more condiments than the ones used here. <laughs> so one day I went to talk to Guillermo. We all know him, the main cook at the cafeteria, and told him, if you just add a little bit more of salt to the food, it would be perfect. The verses that we have read today are all well known to all of us. It is one of the first things that we learn as Christians. We are the salt and light of the world. We say those words and we feel a great responsibility towards the world. Behind those words are the premises that the world has lost its, has lost its flavor and that the world is in darkness. We are their only hope. Salt is also used to heal bruises on our skin. What a great responsibility. Not only we are to flavor the world, but to heal it. We have heard many times all of these interpretations of these verses. We even use them to encourage one another. It is a central part of what we call our public responsibilities or as Christians or ethics. Sounds glorious. But we never stop to think what other consequences this responsibility of being salt and light may have. I said before that salt has curative qualities. If you have a cut or a bruise on your skin, salt is going to help you heal it. I don't know you. But if I have a bruise or a cut on my skin, I will think it twice, if not three times before putting it on my skin. It hurts. Even though it is going to heal me, it's going to add more pain. I am going to scream. I will probably start crying. and may end up rejecting the salt treatment at all. I know it is going to heal me, but I just don't want to add more pain to my healing process. I will probably end up looking for an alternate solution to my problem. I'm going to use an example that it may be sensitive to, to some of us. Seminary has lived an example of this last semester. Some of our students claimed that they were trying to make us reflect about issues of race and sex. The result of their publication was a lot of pain among some of their members of our community. They were trying to do something good, but they ended up hurting. But let me say this, it is easy for us to criticize now. But we all do the same thing in small or larger ways. What about being a, being a light? The use that we give to light is very simple. If we are in a dark room, we turn on the light. We need light to see our surroundings so we can appreciate them. We need light when we are walking so we can see the obstacles in our way and not stumble with them. But have you ever been in a dark room for a long period of time and all of a sudden someone without telling you turn on, turns on the light? The first thing we feel is a horrible pain in our eyes and we close them. Then we ask that person to please turn off the light for we want to be in darkness. The light is too strong for our eyes. Every time I read these verses I think about Plato's myth of the cave. If you're not familiar with it, just imagine a group of people who have been chained in a dark cave. 
All of them are facing the walls of the cave against a little bit of light that is coming from a, a small hole. All they can see is their shadows. They cannot see the source of light. One of them is set free so he can move. This person comes outside of the cave where there is light. On occasions, he remembers what it is to be in darkness and is grateful to be enjoying what it is to be in the light. But one day, he comes back to those who are in the, in the dark cave. Now that he is in the light, he forgot what it is to be in darkness. He is now confused. He doesn't know how to act in the cave. He has lost all of his sensibility towards, dark, towards darkness. He can't even identify his own shadow and the shadows of those in the cave. The people living in the cave think that he has become a ridiculous person. They think that this has happened because he went to the light and then came back to the darkness. So they saw this coming and going as a dangerous thing. So they forbid others to come to the light. I never quite understood this thing of being a light. One trip to New York City with my friend Laura Bratton opened my eyes to this truth. I asked Laura if I could share this story with her, and I am thankful that she said yes. It was the first week of class in, in our junior high, in our, um, in our junior's year. We all know that first week of class is free train ticket to New York. I was talking about it with Laura Bratton and Laura Mitchell. Laura Bratton told us that she has never been to New York before, so we decided to take her that Friday night. My friend, our friend Laura, you all know that she's blind. So since it was her first time in New York, we needed to describe to her what we were seeing and smelling too. We described as many buildings, uh, buildings as we could. We also described the colorful billboards that are all over Times Square. I must admit that we also described some of the colorful and uh, interesting people from New York City. <laughs> At one moment, Laura stopped to call her mom. She was excited about being in the city and she wanted to tell her mom about it. I was listening to her conversation and she was saying, Mom, I have seen all of these buildings. I have seen all of these billboards. In my ignorance, I started to think, how or why is she saying that she saw all of these things? She cannot see. She's blind. Then it hit me. It was Laura Mitchell and me. We both were her eyes. The light so she, she could see all of these things. Being a Christian is not about being sought and light as if it is something to glorify ourselves. It is about those who have lost their saltiness and need salt. It is about those who are in darkness and need light. We have to be mindful of them. So when we come with our salt to them, we don't cause them any more pain, so they reject our medicine. We have to be mindful of those who are in darkness. So when we come to them with our light, we don't cause them to close their eyes and ask us to leave. This means that we have to learn how to be salt. Like any good cook will know how to use the salt when he's cooking, or she. Or a good doctor will know how to use the salt to heal our bruises. We need to learn how to be light, like any lighthouse operator will use the light to guide boats or airplanes in the dark. The wrong use of, our, of, of, of both salt and light can be disastrous to the life of many who are trusting in those who claim to be light and salt. It can mislead them to more pain. How can we be good salt and light? The only answer that I can give to you today is to have love and patience. Not thinking that I am the light, that I am the salt, but being mindful of those who are receiving the salt and the light. Then, and only then, our salt will bring flavor and healing. Then, and only then, the light of Christ will shine in the world. Let us pray. Lord, we have come here with many things on our heart, many responsibilities and stresses that so often distract us from you. Teach us to move beyond ourselves. Teach us to be sensitive to others as we act as your salt and light in the world. We pray for those who are in pain, physically, and emotionally. Heal them and comfort them by your gracious touch. 
We especially remember Teresa, who works in Mackay, as she grieves the loss of her mother. Comfort her and her family in their grief. We pray for the poor and for the hungry. Grant them sustenance and provide for their needs out of your and our abundance. We pray for the seminary, for the administration, that you would give them wisdom as they seek to be good stewards. We pray for the authors of the foreskin and those affected by it. Continue to provide healing for this community and for all involved. We pray for our country and for its leaders. Guide us as we make decisions on war and as we walk through this financial crisis. We pray for Puerto Rico and for Latino countries, that you would provide jobs and homes, but also that you would guide the Latino church to meet needs and to be salt and light. Teach us all your ways, Lord, and transform our hearts even now as we pray the words your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 